What's going on everyone? My name is Skiz and this is my official review of Prime Dang Spray Paint. Today I'll be giving you commentary on my thoughts while using Dang Spray Paint on a full graffiti piece with the important product info that all graffiti artists and graffiti writers are going to want to know about Dang Paint. Then, because Dang Paint specifically emphasizes superior coverage, I'll be doing a coverage test live on camera before painting a piece with some colors which traditionally don't cover well. And of course, at the end, I'll rate this paint and give you my personal thoughts on it. Let's get into it. I'll tell you a bit about this paint while I start this graffiti piece, but I will show you the full process and finished product in another video coming out next week, or it'll be linked in the corner of this video. So bombingscience.com sent me 20 cans of this paint to test out for you guys, but that being said, my review is still 100% my uninfluenced opinion on this paint. Bombing Science is the sole distributor of this paint, which is made in Spain. It emphasizes low pressure output with a soft valve, superior coverage and opacity for a buttery spray can feel. This paint is marketed as being made for graffiti writers by graffiti writers and only costs five US dollars per can or 575 Canadian. This price undercuts Molotow, Montana, Flame and Iron Lac paint. So if it does perform well, then it'll be a strong competitor in the graffiti and mural art markets. And with 157 colors, fast drying, and a base of the chemicals you see on the label, it is not lacking in performance or color variety. It's always incredibly hard to describe specifically how a spray paint feels and even more so when you're trying to describe the subtle differences between spray paint brands. So that being said, I'm going to try and tell you just specifically the things that I notice more so with the spray paint than other spray paints. And the first thing I have to mention is the coverage of it. I did this whole piece you're seeing on screen with just one layer of spray paint. And I also started the piece, as you saw, on a very heavily tagged wall. Basically, for the most part, almost all of the colors were able to cover quite professionally. Although there were a couple colors that seemed a little bit weak and transparent. As someone who uses high pressure paint almost entirely, the low pressure soft valve system of these cans is really great for blending much more so than a lot of the high pressure cans and that soft valve has great atomization as well for those buttery tags and flares the lower pressure also offers great controllability for detail work and outlining a con of the low pressure though is it's quite slow for fill-ins especially if you're used to a higher pressure paint but i feel i should mention it does come with a carolina fat cap which is a soft fat cap Okay, so now that you guys have seen me do a two and a half, three hour piece and gotten my initial thoughts on using Dang Paint in a format where you're actually doing a piece, as promised, now we're going to do a official coverage test where we're actually going to test the coverage of some colors that traditionally in other paint brands don't cover very well and see how they stand up to that. So what we're going to do here to test the coverage out is we have a red. Now a red is usually quite difficult for colors like yellow to cover, blue to cover, and even white with some brands of spray paint. So what we're really looking to test here is it doesn't matter how thick the layers of spray paint you're laying down are, if the yellow, blue, or white don't have very good pigmentation, they will have trouble covering colors that are very vibrant like this red. And after our coverage test, what I will actually do is use some very light colors to do a full a one letter elaborate piece. I sort of like doing those to even further demonstrate how good or how bad the coverage of the dang paint cans are. And at the end, I'm going to tell you three things. Number one, I'm going to tell you if I plan to continue using this paint at all, if I'm going to integrate it into being one of the paints that I actually use for my pieces, etc. Number two, I will tell you guys if I think you guys should give this paint a try and of course why. And number three, I will give it a rating between zero and ten basically. That's just a nice quantitative way to finish the review and give you a definitive answer about this paint. So what I'm going to do is right now I'm just going to throw a few tags up with this red and that is going to be what we try and cover up with the yellow, blue, and white respectively. The names you're going to be seeing me tagging up here are names that subscribers of mine have asked me to put up in a video for them. I'd like to thank the subscribers for supporting me in any way I can, so we're gonna put up some of the tags and give them some hit offs that way and say thank you to the community. So I'll put these tags up and then we will get to the coverage test.
I should get extra style points for having to put up with the wind moving this. So now we're gonna see if we can cover up this shrill and saucer tag just with one layer of this signal yellow. So that's just one very thin layer of this yellow. Obviously, you can see the inconsistencies in the lines. And at first glance, you can see some stuff under it, but at the same time, I would like to emphasize that you couldn't really tell that this saucer tag says saucer anymore. And the point of that is with a lot of brands of paint, what happens is the red would actually sort of bleed through the yellow a little bit, and that would kind of be the poor coverage aspect of it, whereas you don't really get that with this. So I'm gonna argue that this coverage is actually quite good, and I'll just put another layer over this and see what a second layer does as well. And with two layers down of this yellow right away, even before it dries, you're not seeing any bleed through with it, and the coverage is actually quite good. So I would argue this coverage so far of the yellow. Off plane. Oh, it's not a plane, it's a helicopter. A helicopter that has the audacity to ruin my audio. Anyway, with traditionally one of the worst covering colors, pigmentation-wise, this has stood up quite well, I would say. So next, with this sort of light blue, we are going to try and cover up this 4 and dark tag. Shout out to 4 and dark. So you can tell with the blue, absolutely no problem there. I'm not even going to bother putting down a second layer. Let's move on to covering with a white. And with this white, it's a little hard to see on camera maybe. There is a little bit of bleed through, I have to say. So I'm going to let that dry a little bit just to see if any more bleed through comes through. And then once it has dried a little bit, I'll put a second layer over this. All right, so I've let this dry a little bit. I'm giving you a bit of a closer look because I think on camera now you can even see the bleed through a little bit after just one layer. It's looking a lot less consistent now that it's dry. So we're going to give this one more go over and see if that helps it out at all. So layer number two has helped a little bit, but even before it's dried, I can still see the tags through the white. So I do have to say the white is a little bit disappointing, but like I said, traditionally white is a color that companies have had trouble pigmenting accurately. But but I do have to say the white itself is a very, very vibrant white, despite its trouble covering. I can't honestly say that it hasn't had a little bit of trouble covering that, but it's far from the worst white I've ever used. Far from the best, far from the worst. So now that we've explicitly done that coverage test, what I'm gonna do is probably freeze my butt out here, but I'm actually going to do a small piece for you guys using some colors that might have trouble covering specifically. And I'll give you a full look at the finished product. So enjoy. Only because we were talking about how these colors cover, I do sort of want to point out that this avocado green, really nice color, but the coverage, not that great. The other green though, that's just one layer and it's got great coverage. So that was the piece. I'm actually finishing this review off in my garage. And you may be asking, well, Skiz, why are we in your crappy garage? 
next to the wiper fluid? Well, I will tell you, and it has to do with my opinion on this paint. As you can see behind me, I have basically a can of a lot of different brands of spray paint here. This is my shelf where I sort of put a empty can of any brand of spray paint that I like enough to keep an empty can of. It's sort of like a little collection. Basically, this is my way of telling you guys that yes, for me personally, I will be continuing to use this paint and I'm going to be adding it right there to my little collection. It does show that it's a graffiti spray paint made by graffiti writers for graffiti writers. It's a very buttery feel to use. Low pressure is nice. I have never actually used any low pressure paints consistently before for entire pieces. So that was definitely a change. And you do have to sort of adjust your pace when you're using the paint if you're used to a higher pressure can, which isn't a huge deal. It's a bit of a time waster sometimes, but you can always put some higher output caps on it as well. And with that being said, and with the fact that they have 157 colors in their color line, very comparable prices to any other brand up here. It's the cheapest thing up here other than color paint. And to be honest, it doesn't write as if it is a cheaper paint. Like it's, it's a very high quality paint and it's right up there for quality with any of the rest of these brands is my point. If I were you, I would at least give it a try. And that's half the fun of graph. You're under no obligation to use any particular medium. For graffiti, this is a cheaper paint relative to the other ones to try, so you might as well pick up a couple cans. And I know the white and black cans are cheaper than the other ones, and they're always on sale according to Bumming Science, which is nice. As an overall rating, I would give this paint a solid 9 out of 10, maybe a 9.5 out of 10. It's missing that half point or full point just because the color coverage on a couple colors I found to be a little bit weak. That green, the lighter minty green I used in that uh, letter S, that was a fairly weak color in terms of coverage, which is a shame because it's a nice color. So just, I feel like there's a little bit of coverage tweaks that need to be done. That being said, the way they color their color rings is actually by spraying the same spray paint on from the same batch onto the color ring. So you know the color rings are identical to the paint that is in the can. I'm really looking forward to seeing what a lot of the other graffiti writers in the the community think of this paint because it's been rolled out 100%. Bomb and Science is promoting it a ton. So in the comments, let me know if you guys have tried this paint out, what you think of it, if you think other people should be trying it. Because the knowledge that viewers get from reading the comments is more than I could ever get in a review. There's just so much knowledge in our graffiti community. Maybe you want to subscribe. And my video next week will be the full process and final outcome of the piece I did while explaining my initial thoughts about the dang spray paint. So thanks for watching the video. I've got more spray paint reviews over there. Until my next one, peace.